I'm gonna apologize right now if the lighting tends to go like light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Um, I rely on a lot of natural light here in the shop because there's a window there. And I had to roll the door down over there because the fucking birds are out there like tweet, 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 like it's spring or some shit. So I rolled the door down and now the lighting in here kind of sucks. And I'm realizing that I'm gonna have to address the lighting situation in this room. As soon as I address the giant massive pile of boxes over there, which never seems to get any freaking smaller. The Mastercase 5 and Mastercase 5 Pro from Cooler Master combines modularity with creativity, giving you the freedom to build it your way. Make it yours by clicking the link down in the description. Now I have to drain my system again because I'm still working with Mayhems and now Hardware Labs to get to the bottom of why the color is changing inside my system. And to do that, we're gonna put fresh fluid in here. We're gonna flush it out with distilled water. We're not gonna use any chemicals. Uh, we're gonna completely flush it out. This is Editing Jay, and I decided to go ahead and pause this video for a second and let you know that yes, that white speck on my shirt right there is bugging me so much while editing this video, it must be bugging you as a viewer. So do me a favor, hit the like button on this video because then maybe I'll learn how to actually wash my clothes. You damn idiot. All right, back on with the video. And I'm gonna show you guys how the drains work in my system here to kind of give you guys some ideas of how to drain your loops uh, when you're putting your stuff together. Because honestly, a lot of people put their systems together and then at the end of the day, they go, you know, how the hell am I supposed to get the fluid out of there? Well, today we're gonna show you. Okay, so first things first, it's uh, the lighting in here, like I said, it's terrible. So it, this coolant looks like it's black. It's not, I promise, it's orange. This is the loop that's changed color on me now, the CPU loop, which that's the first time that's happened. Um, but again, like I said, I'm working with Hardware Labs and Mayhems, and we're all working together here to get to the bottom line, because at the end of the day, all we're gonna be left with is a better product if we can figure out why this is happening. Now, tons of people came to me and were like, dude, my color's not changing, you're cray cray. And plenty of people came to me and they're like, Jay, my color's changing, please let us know what you find out. So that's why I am going to today be flushing out all of this fluid. This is the Primo Chill fluid. I'm gonna be putting the pastel back in here after we do a distilled water flush. I'm not using any chemicals. I'm not doing another Brits, Blitz Pro cleaning or Blitz cleaning. I have all that stuff. But at the request of Mayhems, we're just gonna do a distilled water flush because our goal today, at least not today, it's gonna take some time, is we want the Mayhems to change color. We want this to change to start to darken on us because I'm gonna send them a sample of the untouched fluid. I'm gonna mix it with distilled water and then I'm gonna send them a sample of the fresh, unused fluid, and then once the fluid starts to change, a sample of the dark fluid so they can compare and see exactly what happened. Yeah, everyone throws out pH, 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 but we need to know what is causing the pH to change. And knowing the pH change is one thing, but they're gonna do their chemical tests to get to the bottom line of exactly what is happening. So I'm taking this opportunity here to not only whore myself out and make a video and try at the end of the day to make a dollar, at least enough to buy some Starbucks, but to finally answer the question of how do the drains work inside my system. Transition. Now my system, I have two loops and the CPU loop is the easiest to change because there's the drain for it right there. You can see uh, it's at the very bottom of the pump reservoir combo and it's at the very lowest point of the loop. That's the most important thing. If you're going to have a drain valve like I'm using, you want it to be at the very bottom of the loop. And the reason for that is if you, uh, you know, crack it open, you don't wanna have any fluid settled below that point because then you have to take the components out and physically tip them over to actually get all of that out, which is kind of pain in the ass. You know, let's face it, we wanna do the most efficient, which is also known as the laziest way to do something, at least in my case. Uh, but because the radiator is horizontal up at the top of the loop, we have no issues getting that drained out and you'll see that. The challenge with the GPU loop, as you can see, is I have a radiator right here that's on its side rather than horizontal. So these take longer to bleed and get all the air out. They also are harder to get all of the fluid out because you have the rows going like this on top of each other. And so the top wants to, you know, you have to tip it certain ways to try and get it to, to leak out or, or drain out. And then no matter how hard you try, there's always gonna be some fluid lower than where the fitting is. Because as you know, if you look at radiators, as you can see, those fittings are not you know, at the very bottom right here, they're in the middle. So you've got these rows right here where fluid will collect, fluid will collect down in there, especially when they're mounted horizontal. So you have to do lots of tipping to try and get the fluid to run from here, you know, into the end tank and then back down to here. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. The only way I'm gonna really be able to get all of the fluid out 
is to pretty much disassemble the GPU radiators at the bottom and then you know, manually tip them to get it out, which really kind of sucks. Now Skunk Works is obviously very busy down the bottom. We've got you know, a 280 on its side and a 560 on its side, which is why it's really kind of a pain in the ass to get these to drain because both radiators are dealing with that fitting, you know, not being at the very lowest point. Even though I do have a drain here that's coming off of a T fitting on one of the radiators here on the lowest point where they're connected with a cross tube, this still is not going to be at the very bottom of the loop. So although this will help me get a lot of the fluid out, it's not going to get everything out for me which again, really kind of sucks. Um, but you know, I'll make it work because I really don't feel like taking out the power supply and all the cables because I did that thing where I was like, hey, it'd be really cool to put hard tubing down here. Yeah, well, the flexible tubing allowed me to at least pull the radiator out, you know, and kind of swing it away and get my hand in there if I needed to, uh, to disconnect the rads. Yeah, can't exactly do that now with the rigid because I put those in and then the power supply. And now that I have to drain it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't, uh, can't exactly get my hand in there. Shit. So I cracked open one of the little fittings on the top of the reservoir, that way air can get into the loop, otherwise we can't push it out. So that's gonna be something that you wanna keep in mind, is if you get your re re uh, reservoir, re 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 if you get your reservoir at the highest point of the loop, uh, if you can, obviously if you have a radiator on top, that's not gonna work, it will help it bleed faster. But all I have here is an empty uh, one gallon jug of distilled water, and I have a T-valve here, which is a bits power T-valve with a fitting on the end of it plugging that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the fitting off the end here. You can always tell when your valve is closed, by the way, because when the valve is turned perpendicular to the flow direction, that means it's closed. And when it's turned parallel with it, that means it's open. Little pro tip there for you. That way you don't screw off your, you know, your little cap here and all of a sudden, pfft, there goes all your fluid all over your chair or whatever, like in my case. So now we're just gonna turn this guy. Yeah, Skunk Works likes to take leaks. She's a leaky bitch. Not really, I've only had one leak in this thing like ever. Something else you can do too, which tends to weird a lot of people out when they see me do it, at least friends and stuff, is I'll attach a piece of spare tubing to a barb fitting there and then I will put it into the other end like that. As you can see, I actually have that pressed down into the handle right there, that way it doesn't pop out. But then what I also do is I do that on the reservoir and then I literally blow into it. Yeah, I blow the computer. Get your mind out of the gutter. So you can see the GP loop is mostly drained. There's of course still a little bit like right there in that tube. Um, there's going to be some left in the bottom of the radiator right there, which is really going to suck. Uh, well, I guess technically what we just did was blow, right? Okay, so the way that I'm gonna do the actual flushing of the system here with the distilled water is exactly the same as I showed you when I did the test loop video where we tested milk and Gatorade or Powerade and all that junk, uh, where I'm basically going to fill the loop up with distilled water, and then I'm going to crack the drain valve at the bottom of the loop just a little bit. And I'm gonna use my fill tube and I'm going to continue to add distilled water as it's slowly draining out of the bottom and letting the, the fluid recirculate in the loop. That will end up catching all of the orange and pissing it out through the, the, the actual drain at the bottom. And then once we're done, we're going to drain the entire system again like I showed you and hopefully get as much of the fluid out as we possibly can. So as you can see, even though I'm filling it with clear distilled water, it is actually turning orange because there was still some orange dye and fluid down there in the radiators. So we're just gonna continue to do this method of filling this reservoir as I crack that drain loop down there, letting it drain into the catch bottle there until it starts getting completely clear. It could take a while, especially in a loop this size, uh, but that's the way that I actually will try and flush out previous color. But remember, Mayhems, we want this, we want this fluid to change color because we need to be able to test it. So that's why we're only doing the distilled water method. But the way to drain it and stuff, that all, that all remains the same. So as you can see right now, the fluid level in the reservoir is going down slowly because I have that drain just cracked, just a little bit. And now as it goes down, I'm just gonna fill up the reservoir again. And I'm gonna do this over and over and over until the reservoir is completely clear. Also make sure you keep an eye on your catch bottle there and you don't want it to overflow on you. You might have to throw that out every now and then, depending on how much fluid is in your loop and how much cooling or water it takes to actually completely uh, make that, you know, clear. Damn sun keeps going in and out, making things super bright. The exposure is all screwed up in this damn video. Now one really important thing to note here is that I am not powering up the system to do this, to be able to run the pumps. I have the pumps plugged into uh, another power supply over there, as you can see, just a cheap little Thermaltake power supply, TR, 
or RX2 or TR2 RX, whatever. Um, yeah, so I just have the pumps being powered through that. You do not want to run your system while you are doing this, especially when there's a chance of you possibly splashing it or spilling it. So do not run your system while bleeding and trying to drain it like that. But as you can see now, the orange dye is no longer affecting the clear, so that means we are completely flushed out of the color. And it took about two gallons, oh, look, power cord. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Jay. But it took me approximately two, well, this was the second gallon of distilled water and you can see what's left. So that's about how much it took. It's gonna take a lot less to do it with the uh, CPU loop because like I said, there's less fluid in it and that is literally at the very bottom of the loop. So I'll be able to get most of the coolant out before we even start. Now allow me to show you why having multi-port res tops is definitely something worth having even if you don't think you're going to ever have the tube coming in the top because being able to open up one of these makes it very easy compared to having to unscrew the whole top when it comes to letting the fluid out. Right now I have the tube coming down in here into my catch uh, can or one gallon distilled water bottle, let's be honest, it's not a, really a can. But even if I turn the valve to full open, look at that, it's like, oh, nothing wants to come out. Because you have pressure in here and you need to have equal in for equal out, there has to be air to replace the fluid. So if you're doing this going, it's not working, well, once you open up one of the ports on the top and air can get in, well, as you can see, then magic happens. So yeah, you have to have air equal in, equal out. Air has to replace the volume that's currently being used up by the fluid. Well, the new fluid is installed and it looks freaking amazing. In fact, I'm a little bit unhappy now with the orange tops on the Dominator because it's such a different color. I might actually end up taking my silver ones and painting them to match this more of a Caltrans road cone orangey color. But anyway, there you go, guys. Those are the methods that I use for draining and kind of flushing my loops if I'm just doing like a distilled water flush. Obviously, if you're gonna do a deep cleaning, you need to take it apart and you need to use like any of the system prep or the Blitz Pro or whatever you're gonna to use to clean your system you know, individually, and at least per the instructions on those kits. But this is nothing more than just a quick, simple flush because like I said, uh, I explained in the beginning of this video that I'm doing this because we want the fluid to change color, which really kind of sucks because I'm gonna to have to go through everything you just saw again. But because we want to get to the bottom of this, we want this fluid to change color. That way I can send a sample of the unused fluid, which is actually right here. So I've got extra, like I showed you. That's ne not gonna go in the system. So then I can send them a sample of, hey, this is what the fluid is like exactly out of the bottle mixed with distilled water. And then this is what the fluid is like now after getting contaminated. And then they can do chemistry and science bitch and all kinds of other stuff to figure out what actually happened to the fluid, which will then hopefully tell us exactly what's at fault. Is it the fluid? Is it the dye? Is it the radiator? Is it flux? Is it who knows, is it the, the, the nickel plating? Is it the, the O-rings? Who freaking knows? And until we know, we can't, we're, just, we're just kind of throwing you know, pitches in the dark. We don't know exactly what's happening. Pitches in the, it doesn't even make sense. I don't even know why the hell I said that. But anyway, I just had to say why I was doing this. Otherwise, there would have been a lot of confused people going, why are you doing this when you know it's gonna change color on you? Because my system has got, uh, has got the plagues. Anyway, guys, time to go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys look in the description. Um, Anyway, time to go guys. Make sure you look in the description, check out my second channel. Got some more car stuff coming up, some vlogs and other ways to help support the channel with Amazon and whatnot. 
Anyway, time to go. Thanks a bunch for watching. And I got to carry this 80 pound behemoth back up the stairs. Moving to a two story house and putting the office upstairs was a terrible idea. My back hates me. But Skunk Works looks awesome though. I mean, really, you can't deny that.